Hello, everyone. How are you? It's Pastor Rod here from Tokyo, Japan. So excited to bring you the Word of God. How many love the Word of God? And uh, here at Lifehouse, we're seeing a lot of people uh, get blessings and moving forward in many ways. But you know what? We all struggle with temptation and bad thoughts. And I think in this time of pandemic, sometimes that temptation can get bigger. Uh, bad thoughts can get bigger. It's sort of like a, a balloon. And uh, you'll notice I have my, my balloons here to help me uh, share the message today. It's called Pop That Balloon. Come on, pop that balloon. This is going to be about don't let temptations and bad thoughts rule over your life. So temptations sort of start, start small and they sort of get bigger and bigger and And we think we're going to deal with them and uh, I can do it, I can do it. And uh, it gets a bit smaller and then gets bigger again one day. And, and so uh, we need to learn how to pop that balloon, all right? Now, as a young Christian, I came out of a, 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 a bad background at the age of 19. And one of the things I really struggled with was flashbacks, thoughts that I, that things I'd done in the past. So... I'm going to take my first balloon here called flashbacks. Now, when I pop the balloon today, I'm going to give you a warning, all right? So all you parents don't go, whoa, and all the kids go, hey, can we have some balloons, mum and dad, whatever. <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to give you a warning of one, two, three, pop, all right? So I'm not going to do it right now, but when I do it in a few minutes, I'm actually going to give you a warning that I will actually pop the balloon. Now, this morning as we prepared for this, uh, there was someone that really jumped, whoa, so, <laughs> and she was very happy that that all happened, and um, uh, my cameraman, the pastor from Tachikawa, was very amused. But anyway, anyway, get back to the point. When I was a young Christian, I, I, I loved Jesus, I, my, my heart was renewed, and as a scripture I love, it's um, 2 Corinthians 5.17 that says that, that if, um, if there, anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. Actually, you get created anew. It's not like God fixing us or repairing us or even changing us. God is actually making us a new. He has made us a new creation. The old has gone, the new is here. And so my heart and my soul were renewed, but my thinking was old. You know what I mean. When you become a believer, you are a new creation. You are a new person in Christ. The old is gone. Anyway, we have to learn what to do with bad thoughts. We have to learn to, to, what to do with temptations because even Jesus was tempted, right? We're going to come to that soon. But one of the things I suffered with was, was, was flashbacks, like uh, just walking along or even worshipping at church, and all of a sudden something I'd done in the past, boom, it's just there. It's, it's just there again. And it's like the devil saying, you haven't changed. You're still the old. And that's what the devil does. And I had to learn how to pop that balloon. Now, I can fight this with my own strength and say, no, go away, flashbacks, and you get out of my life. And Or I can learn to do what Jesus did. He just popped the balloon with the Word of God. Come on, come on. Pop the balloon with the Word of God. So I had to learn as a new Christian. I've got my safety pin here, folks. And uh, any kids watching this at home, don't use pins without mum and dad's permission, all right? Or Probably just don't use them at all. <laughs> Mum and Dad, you be careful too, all right? But here we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a warning. One, two, three. I'm going to pop it. I had to learn that I couldn't, I couldn't make it feel better. Oh, there, there. That's my past. I couldn't, I couldn't make it smaller. I couldn't say, well, you know, I'm really a good guy. And, you know, and, and no, I had to learn how to pop the balloon with the Word of God. With the Word of God. So when that flashback came... I had to say in my heart the scripture and I'm no longer the same as I was. That old person, Rod, is dead. Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, that was loud. <laughs> I had to learn how to pop the balloon. And, and where is it? It's, it's gone. It's gone. And this is what we learn to read in the temptations of Jesus Christ. You know, bad thoughts do come from the devil and from my own selfish life. And, and so we've got to learn not to massage that and, and try to even, you know, sort of rash, rationalize it and say, well, I'm, I'm not a bad guy. That doesn't work. Have you found it? It doesn't work. You've got to pop the balloon with the Word of God. Come on, pop the balloon with the Word of God. And in English, we have a saying that you can't stop a bird from flying over your head, 
but you can stop it from laying a nest in your hair. In other words, bad thoughts are going to come, even in worship, even during this wonderful message today. Some of you are going to have a bad thought. Some of you are going to think about this and that and that, and you've got to learn how to pop that balloon with the Word of God. And, and I believe that as we do that, those birds are going to come across our, our heads less and less. They're definitely not going to lay a nest in our hair. And I believe, I believe as a person who has been delivered from negativity, depression, and suicidal thoughts, when I became a believer, God started to teach me how to pop the balloon with the Word of God. Now, that whole thing about popping a balloon, you can't do that on a train. You can't go, I'm going to pop my balloon. <laughs> Everyone's going to step away from you. You can't do it in your house and I'm just popping my balloon. And those of you who are married, you can't walk around the house popping balloons like imaginary balloons. So this is an illustration. But what I did learn as a young believer is that I called it the flick of faith. I'm going to come back to that at the end. But instead of doing this big, you know, popping thing, it's like I just learned to no to temptation. I call it the flick of faith or the flick of freedom in Jesus' name. Now we're going to read about Jesus. Are you ready? We're going to read about Jesus showing us how to pop the balloons of trials, temptation, bad thoughts, negative thoughts, whatever. We're going to, we're going to be teaching today what Jesus did. You're going to love this. You ready? Here we go. This is Luke chapter 4. And it's also in Matthew 4. You can read it later in another uh, gospel. Luke 4, 1. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. I want to start this by saying that even Jesus was tempted. Now, this is a really important concept because if we think, uh, now I'm a Christian, I'm not going to be tempted. We've got the wrong, the wrong thinking. If you're thinking, now I'm a Christian, I'm not going to have bad thoughts. No, 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 no. That's not true. In fact, it says here in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 18 about Jesus, he himself suffered when he was tempted. He is able to help those who are being tempted. We have Jesus who understands the concept of the bird flying over the head. Now, Jesus never let it land and, and, and build a nest in his hair. He never sinned, but he didn't, he, it didn't stop temptation, bad thoughts coming. And this is exactly what we're going to read here. We're going to read that Jesus was tempted as we are. Let's, let's go to that other scripture in Hebrews. Um, where are we? Here we are. Hebrews 4 verse 15. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. So I've got my balloons here and we could put, you know, uh, you know bad thoughts, negative uh, gossip. And, and, and I'm not saying Jesus did any of that. In fact, it says he, 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 he did not sin. He did, he did not allow the temptation to have any root, any power in his life. That's Jesus. Come on, that's Jesus. We, God is perfect. Yay, we love you, God. You're the only Perfect one. Yay, you're amazing. Jesus, you're amazing. He's the uh, His Holy Spirit in our, in our life. And, and He's amazing. And that doesn't make me God. It means that I have the ability to, to live with the power of the resurrected Jesus Christ. Come on. Jesus was tempted every way in which you have and I have been tempted every way. And we could put those names on there and Jesus uh, that came, but He went, no, 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 no. You see, temptations and bad thoughts are common to all people, even Jesus. Now, we're going to read here how the, the devil, we read here how the, the devil, the devil tempted Jesus. And I want to tell you, you have an enemy called the devil. You may not want enemies. I know a lot of people today say, I have no enemies. I'm a peace-loving person. But the Bible says we don't fight against people. We fight against uh, the devil and all his dark forces. So when that thought comes... You've got to know where it's coming from, and you've got to know that it's common to all people. Now, the word devil actually means to throw something to throw something upon you. It's like all of a sudden you throw something, oh, look, it's on me. That's the devil. He's the one who causes gossip, bad speaking about other people, lying, stealing, immorality. We can go on and on. The devil is the originator of 
the bad thoughts. And, and so the word devil itself means slanderer, the one against you, the one, if you want to be a, a believer who has got a dream, I've got a dream and the devil says you're nobody. You start going to do something for God and the devil says, but what about what you used to do? Whoops, sorry about that, Mr. Balloon. Um, <laughs> all right, the devil is the one who will challenge, and we're going to read this in a minute because he's going to challenge Jesus. Um, we're going to read here verse 3. The devil, the, the thrower, the thrower of the balloons, the, the thing, said to him, if you are the son of God, then tell this stone to become bread. Now, we've got to get used to this. This is the challenge of the devil. It's the if word. The, so if you're going to do something great for God, what about this? Well, if you're going to do that, well, what would you just do? And, and so here's this, this concept. And Jesus answered Three times. There's going to be three temptations, and Jesus is going to answer every single one with, It is written. Now, uh, it is written, Man shall not live on bread alone. Now, this first temptation, the devil said, uh, You've just been, had no food for 40 days, and it's very natural that you're hungry and you're lonely and you're maybe not in quarantine like we are with the coronavirus, but he's, he's away from the community. There is a sort of a quarantine happening. Uh, an isolation. And in that isolated moment, the, the devil brings up a, a, uh, uh, a uh, temptation. It's a real temptation. It's just hunger. It's just, uh, you're hungry, Jesus. Um, tell, 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 tell this. You, it's sort of a, 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 I don't know what to say. It's just a, a, a temptation. It's, a, it's one of them. I don't know what that is. But anyway, um, the, the devil says, hey, Jesus, if, if you're really the son of God, come on, you can make these stones, bread, right? Now, Jesus could have done that. That's actually true. It's actually a possibility. And most temptations are a possibility. You could do that. You could think that. It's, it's sort of a real thing. But, but Jesus said, it is written. Now, all three of Jesus' answers is going to come from the book of Deuteronomy. I think Jesus had to be just, just reading the book of Deuteronomy, probably out in the wilderness. He probably had a few scrolls out there and he's reading and memorizing the word of God, just like I was with that a new creation in Christ, the old is gone. And, uh, and, and, and he says to the devil, it is written. This is Jesus' first balloon pop. Are you ready? Jesus didn't massage it. He didn't think about it. He didn't say, I'm not a bad person. He just said, it is written. And he speaks a verse. Are you ready? I'm going to pop. This is Jesus' first pop. I'm going to do one, two, three pop. Are you ready? One, two, three. Three, it is written. Oh my goodness, that's loud. <laughs> it's a good pop right there. And that's the end of the first temptation, but it's not the end. And, and the, de the devil then in verse five led him. Now the first one, Jesus uh, is in the, de in, the, in the wilderness and it says the devil said to him. Have you ever heard something that's weird? You've got to say, no, 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 no. Pop that balloon. The second one, it says the devil comes and shows him something. First one, the devil speaks to him. The second one, the devil shows him. Now, we're living in a world of the internet where we can see just about anything on the planet, good and bad. And I'm going to say to you right now, we need to know, we have to be careful of what our eyes are seeing. So here we go. You're ready here. Well, you know, so it's sort of the whatever our eyes are seeing. Now, I'm not saying Jesus sinned. He didn't. He did not sin. But the temptation came. And uh, it says here, the devil uh, led him to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. Now, let's have a look. The devil said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor because it has been given to me and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will all be yours. If you worship me, there's the if. Here's the condition. If you worship me, I'll give it all. Now, this is a bigger temptation than the first temptation. And the reason it was big, because Jesus came to the earth to save people. Amen. For God, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, Jesus, will not perish but have everlasting life. His mission, his mission in life was to come and it says in Luke 19 to, 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 uh, to, to love and to save those who are lost. It's his mission. And the devil says, I'll, I'll give it all to you. You can have it all. 
All your ambitions fulfilled, all your dreams fulfilled, just come and worship me. And of course, there was, although it was a temptation, there's no way Jesus uh, was going to do that. And so he, he's getting ready for his second balloon pop. Second temptation, second balloon pop. Verse 8, and Jesus answered, it is written. I'm going to pop it in a minute, not now, but you know what it was coming. Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And so what was apparently quite a big temptation, and it would have been a big one for me and you and any of us wanted to see our ambitions and, and wealth and riches and, and uh, fame and celebrity and all this sort of stuff, and you can have it instantly if you just worship the devil. And Jesus said, no, 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 worship the Lord your God only. I pray that is our answer, folks. I pray that we have the same balloon pop that, that Jesus had here. Help, help us, Lord, to be like you, that when we are tempted... To, to desire something that we should not have at this moment. As we get frustrated and upset and, and, and the devil comes to, to tempt us, that we are going to have the same balloon pop. Lord, help us. So when, when the devil said, this will all be yours, if you worship me, Jesus said, are you ready? We're going to come to a balloon pop right now. We're gonna, I'm going to do one, two, three pop. You ready? When it came, it wasn't a massage. Oh, well, that would be nice, but no. Or, yeah, that's okay. No, no, no. no. It was an absolute disintegration of the temptation right there. It was a, you ready? It is written. One, two, three. Oh, there we go. Number two. Number two, temptation of Jesus went. And the devil moves on to the next one. You're seeing the, the pattern here. When we say no, it doesn't mean it's all over. It means the devil's going to move on to something else that might be interesting or, or we, we might not be able to, uh, to, to as, as easily uh, get rid of it in our lives. Okay, number three. Number three. First one, the devil said to him something. The second one, the devil showed him something. The third one, the devil led him. Led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. And uh, if you're the son of God, there it is again. If you are who you say you are, if you're a Christian, if you're a believer, if you... If you've got a destiny, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down from here for it is written. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Now, please understand the devil can quote scripture too. The devil's quoting a scripture, but it's not complete. It's very interesting that when the devil quotes this scripture, he leaves out a little line and the little line is that, is that they will protect you in all your ways in your ways. In other words, in my normal life, in my normal living in Japan or wherever I'm living and, and, and with my family, in my normal living, there is a protection. There is angels. Amen. Amen. I'm believing every night, Viv and I pray for protection from coronavirus for all of you and, and us. And, and, and I'm praying and I'm, and I'm praying and I'm praying and I'm believing for protection. But the devil's basically saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. We know that, uh, God will protect you. So just, just throw yourself down here. And this was probably an act of pride. I'm going to put the word pride. I'm, I'm not saying that Jesus uh, succumbed. It's not working. Um, it's running out. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Cameraman. The word pride, I'm going to put it here. It's probably, I'm not saying Jesus had pride. I'm saying the temptation was pride. Is that okay? And so the concept, if you do this, if you do this, then you're proving that God is with you, the angels are with you, you you're proving who you are, that you everyone will know that you are Messiah, Jesus. And but Jesus answers once again, are you ready for the third pop? Not yet, but you're ready. In verse 12, Jesus answered, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again from Deuteronomy. Three times Jesus quoted from Deuteronomy 6 and Deuteronomy 8. In other words, a very tight little section of the Old Testament that Jesus had memorized and memorized. And in the time of testing, the, the scripture comes out. And it's not like, oh, well, you know, I, I could do that. And uh, I'm not a bad person. It would be like, no, 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 no. Jesus comes straight back with the third balloon pop. Are you ready? Are you ready, folks? Are you ready? Because I believe that today, right now, some people with that and other things right now, you can say no to bad thinking, no to depression, no to, 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 to suicidal thinking, no to the, the desire to do wrong. We, we can by the power of the Holy Spirit. Come on. I'm going to do it. I'm going to say it. Jesus said, it is written. The third, third balloon pop, I'm going to count to three. 
One, two, three. Oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm a sucker for punishment, aren't I? <laughs> I'm doing this as an illustration. I'm not trying to be smart. I'm trying to you to understand that you can't just make it your pet. And my, this is my, this is, oh, that was an accident, actually. <laughs> Maybe that, was, that needed a pop. I don't know what happened there. But, uh, we are very earthy here in this. <laughs> you guys, did you do that? Anyway, uh, <laughs> hey, hey with, with whatever it is we're facing, for me, flashbacks. You can't pet it. And say, that's who I am, that's just what I did, that's what I think, I'm different than other people. No, 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 the Bible says don't think that you're different than other people. I'm going to read you the scripture, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. If you think you're alone with your temptation as the only one in the world, you're in danger. You're in danger. If you think you're the only one in your situation, you're in danger. If you say, oh, there's, there's millions of other Christians going through what I'm going through and they're calling on the Lord, they're, they're saying it is written, then we're saying to this, and it is my last one, you can see here, is my last one as I bring this to a close. Um, I'm going to tell you that you're not alone. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. God is with us. God is Emmanuel. He's in our hearts. And he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you're tempted, he will also provide a balloon pop, a way out, so that you can endure and succeed in life. I, I believe that we need to really understand this. And, and with my first illustration of a, uh, the, the, that thing growing, the bad thought, The Bible says that when the devil tempts us, our own self can agree. So I'm going to read here James 1.14. Each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. And then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full, fully grown, gives birth to death. So you can see how temptation can grow in our life. We're agreeing with the devil. The devil says, I'm no good, no good. And I say, yeah, I guess I'm not feeling very good. And well, the devil says, you, you need to go on the internet and have a look at that thing and you, you do it. Yeah, I'll do it. And, and so sin has this way of, of doing that. And I'm just going to let that air go out of that because that's not my illustration right there. Let's move on because when Jesus says to the devil, enough is enough. We're going to read here actually in verse, um, verse 13. It says, and when the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him for an opportune time. In other words, temptation is seasonal. It's not the same all the time. And you will notice there are certain patterns. And, and, and so here I'm going to finish today by telling you my, the way that I would finally, I'm going to do my final balloon pop at the end of all this, all right? This is what I would do if there's temptation, bad thoughts. Rod Plummer wakes up and he starts to praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. But here we go. This is how I do my balloon pop. Number one, I need to understand what is happening. It's another season. It's another season. It's not a new temptation. It's the same old temptation coming back. And I need to decide to, to bring it to Jesus. Point number two. It's not what the devil says to me or shows me or leads me that's important. It's what is written in God's Word. So 2 Corinthians 5.17, as a young believer, I got it in my heart. And I said, when the, when the temptation come, you know, I, I would say, therefore, those who are in Christ are a new creation. I'm new. I'm not broken. I'm not bad. I, I got Jesus. I'm a son of God. Now, the old is gone. The new has come. And I would pop that lie of flashbacks and negative self-thinking. It's written in God's Word. Replace bad thoughts with the Word of God. Don't, don't make a big deal of it. I tell you, it's going to help you. Number three, say no more. No more. I know what you are. I know that temptation. I know that bad thinking. No more. This is not helping me. This is not leading me to have a good marriage or a good family or a good job. This is, this is not my future. Then... I am going to pop my final balloon. Are you ready? I'm going to do one, three, one, two, three, pop. Get the word of God. And I, no more. This thing, this is no more. I'm not going to have this anymore. Are you ready? One, two, three. I've had enough in Jesus' name. Amen. 
the balloon just landed on my cameraman. <laughs> that doesn't mean he... Anyway, moving on, moving on. The last thing I want to say, last thing I want to say is God is with you. As a young Christian, I had all these flashbacks, all this stuff, but I've been walking with God for 41 years. The same temptations from the beginning keeps coming back. But now I know it. I know how to use the Word of God. And that thing, although it comes at no way, and I'm going to pray for you right now. Come on. That you're going to pop those balloons, those pop balloons of low self-esteem or, or, or seduction or, or lying or gossip or, or, or just, just being down on yourself. Just, I'm just going to pray right now that as I speak this Word of God over your life, 2 Corinthians 5.17 You are going to have a balloon popping experience. No more balloons, but you're going to have a balloon popping experience in your heart. So you're ready. Here we go. Thank you, Jesus, that you showed us the way. You showed us the way. It is written. And we feel your anointing right now. We feel your strength, the power of the resurrected Jesus Christ living in our hearts. And we say no more. That stuff's not helpful to me anymore. It's gone. And I pray, Lord, we would pop it with the Word of God. And I speak this Word of God over my friends and over, over all those listening right now, I'm going to speak 2 Corinthians 5.17. It's going to pop balloons. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. They are a new creation. The old is gone and the new is here. And I pray, Lord, we'd sense your love and your grace and your goodness and your power right now, right now, right now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God a big whopping praise, folks. He is amazing and He is with you. And finally, if you don't know Jesus and and there is sin in your life that needs to be forgiven, Jesus died on a cross 2,000 years ago and rose after three days. And it says, all who believe in Him, the perfect Jesus, dying for us, all our sins will be forgiven completely removed, forgiven, and we we got the righteousness and love of God and the destiny of God is enacted in our life. Would you like that? I'm going to count to three and I'm going to ask, would you become a believer or would you come back to Jesus Christ when I count to three? You ready right now? Here we go. One, God loves you. Two, would you open your heart to Him? And three, right now, would you say, I believe in Jesus. I'm coming back to Jesus. Let me pray. Thank you, Lord, for these amazing people. Pray for your blessing on them, your grace and your love, all your power. We thank you for each one in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. And folks, I just want to encourage you to uh, to subscribe and share and be part of the community of faith here at Lifehouse or in your local church. Be a blessing. Come on. Let's, those balloons are popping all over the place right now and we're walking in our destiny in Jesus' name. Have an amazing week. God bless you.